A homeless encampment known as Camp Nino Kasi is being cleared today by the city of Minneapolis. This is what the camp looked like a couple of hours ago. You can see police and others surrounding the area near 14th Avenue South and East 26th Street. City leaders say the camp had to be cleared out because of health and safety concerns. This morning, the city work to close the encampment at East 26th Street and 14th Avenue. Where this do you want comes, them to go? This comes. Where do you want people to go? There are there's a hundred people at the camp and you're saying there's 80 beds open. Where do you want them to go? I'll address how many people Sir, are Where should they move their stuff? They're giving an opportunity. Sir, let's go. You came in What's with her? hundreds of police officers. What's her? Jeff, was, Jeff was security. Just hundreds of police officers to throw people's stuff away. Where do you want them to go? As I was saying, the closure of the encampment has begun. Let people live. People were given an opportunity to gather items, their personal belongings, as well as take down the yurts that are on site. And they're we are working together with police as well as other city personnel to be sure that people can remove those items out of the site. As long as that continues, we will wait until that work finishes before securing of this site begins. This has been hundreds of hours of work between all government partners, including the county, who is the social service provider for our folks who are in Minneapolis, as well as the state of Minnesota. Every single night since January, the beginning of January, there have been between 80 and 90 shelter beds available for people. We do understand that temporary shelter is not the ultimate answer for people, but often temporary shelter has to be used to be able to get to permanent housing and in many cases, treatment for addiction and other issues. And so part of this is getting people willing to uh, often enter into some sort of addiction treatment program. And that's another thing we've been doing. We actually have been working actively with Red Lake Nation, and Red Lake Nation wants to build a permanent structure that would be a healing center an op opioid treatment center and other addiction center. We have identified two pieces of land at least in the city's inventory of property that we are going to work to transfer to Red Lake Nation for that purpose. Because we do understand that there are times cultural differences in how providers are providing their, their treatments. So today, Three people have exited the encampment so far who were living at the encampment. We believe that the number of people living at this encampment overnight at this time is under 25. We will know by the end of the day and have a more confirmed number. There have been 80 to 90 beds available every single night since the beginning of January. And that information comes directly from the dashboard of Hennepin County's outreach team. We believe that everyone deserves safe housing. Uh, unfortunately, large encampments don't provide that. They pose a significant health and safety risk to both the people living in the encampments and the surrounding community. We've responded to numerous health concerns and safety concerns at this current uh, encampment at East 26 and 14 uh, Street, I mean Avenue, and the former location. Some of those uh, issues have been death threats among campers, assaults, gunshots with injuries, vandalism, property damage, drug overdose, and fentanyl use. Last, uh, last uh, October, I think like a lot of you reported, there was a newborn death at the encampment and also uh, there was an individual who died from a drug overdose. In December, a man was shot and killed and last week, the Department of Health, uh, their team had to respond to an outbreak of a stomach virus. And our health department continues to monitor the air quality 
at the encampment due to the campfires. Yesterday, a 29-year-old uh, man, unidentified man, was shot and sustained non-life-threatening injuries and was taken to the hospital. And that occurred just outside of the encampment. And based on our preliminary information that we have, uh, the individual that shot him emerged from the encampment when that interaction occurred. One of the things uh, that I want to make clear is that we cannot ignore the public safety concerns at these large encampments or the health concerns associated with the large encampments. And I think it's important that uh, we also realize that we're still in an opioid academic, uh, opioid uh, crisis at this time and that uh, there are things that go along with that and we see that in some of the encampments here. The bottom line is that the closure had to happen because of health concerns and uh, the safety concerns there. Over 130 people have been housed in either temporary or permanent housing under a contract with Helix Healthcare. That is something that the city put a million dollars into. That was unprecedented for the city of Minneapolis. It is also in partnership with the county. As I mentioned, unlike other jurisdictions around the country, we have a devolved system of social services, which means the county has the responsibility to provide social services, not the city. And although we can do some things, we cannot do this without our partners, and that is what we continue to do. I also want to say that uh, because of the imminent closure, which we noticed on the very first day that this encampment was established, we did place porta potties for sanitation and provided trash pickup as well to help relieve the pressure on both the encampment and the surrounding residents. Again, large encampments are not dignified housing, and we have a responsibility to make sure that people have offered, been offered the services that are available through the city, county, and state. And we'll continue to do that work. City officials also pointed out that any given night, there are 80 to 90 shelter beds open for people who need them. Hennepin County works with Minneapolis to offer those resources to people. We'll continue to follow this story and have much more for you coming up tonight on our news at six o'clock.